praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes, and this is The Bible Speaks Live. Once again, coming to you with a word that we believe, we truly believe, will encourage you tonight. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live, and also those those joining us on Spreaker.com. Uh, tonight, we, we have a word uh, from the Lord that uh, will lift you up. We know that the times are hard, and times are hard for most everyone, but it's the way you deal with the hard times that will, as we say, get you over. It's how you deal with the situations and the circumstances that come in your life that will turn the tide, so to speak, on the enemy. It's the enemy that tries to come uh, in these situations that happen in our life, and it is he who comes and tries to steal that which the Lord has given us. But we must remember, it wasn't him who blessed us. And so therefore he is not really able to take anything away from us. Our hope, our trust, our faith, as we will see this evening, has to be squarely focused on the Lord completely. So once again, we want to thank you for joining us. Let somebody know that we are on the air right now here on Facebook Live and also on Spreaker.com. Uh, tonight I want to bring you to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And here, uh, when we get to chapter 14, uh, we are just near the end of the Israelites' plight. Their problem, their situation, their circumstance uh, that they were in. Uh, you know that the Israelites, they were... They were in bondage for nearly 450 years to the Egyptians, and they had cried out for mercy to, to the Lord. They had cried out uh, for uh, for deliverance, and the Lord heard them. Listen, we must always keep it in mind that when we call on the Lord, and I know it seems like it, but when we call on the Lord, he hears us. He really does hear us when we call, and even when the situation doesn't change. Even when the situation seems to not move, uh, even when the situation uh, seems to uh, remain the same, we must have that assurance that the Lord is in control and he sees and he knows. But we must remember that everything happens in his time. And that is one of the keys to remember. Everything happens in the Lord's time. 450 years they were in bondage before the Lord saw fit to send them a deliverer. So let's read uh, Exodus chapter 14. And uh, I'm going to start reading uh, in verse number 12. Let's, do, let's start reading in verse number 13. Uh, Exodus chapter 14, starting in verse number 13, it says, And Moses said to the people, Fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today you shall see them again no more forever now, I can stop right there uh, that, that that's a promise those are some great words from the Lord the Egyptians that you see today you will see no more forever verse number 14 the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace verse 15 and the Lord said to Moses wherefore cry you to me speak to the children of Israel that they Go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we pray that even right now you might bless your word as it goes forth. Lord, I pray you might anoint your word as it goes forth, and I pray you might anoint the ears of those under the sound of your word tonight. Father, have your way. Bless in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You know, there are so many difficulties going around today. There is, there is, we don't have enough hands, enough feet, uh, and uh, fingers and toes, rather, to, to count the problems and the difficulties and the circumstances uh, that come in our life. Uh, and there is no way to rate which one is worse, 
whether this thing that's happening to me that I'm going through is bad or this thing that's happening to me or my left is happening. Listen, the Lord has us in these things for a reason. There's a reason why you go through what you go through. I like to say that many of these things, I'm going to call them tonight for our purposes. In these verses tonight, we all have pharaohs in our life. We all have pharaohs in our life. We all have plights and, and situations, circumstances that seem to be beyond our control. And in actuality, they are beyond our control. We're going to find out tonight that there is nothing that we in ourselves can do about these situations that come into our lives. There is not a thing I can do about it. There is not a thing that you can do about it. But when we read about the Israelites' plight, when it got hard enough, when it became difficult enough, they cried out to the Lord. The Bible says that this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble. The Lord heard, the Lord delivered. This is what the Lord does. He hears and his ear is not too dull that he cannot hear. Always remember that. His ear is never dull that he cannot hear us when we speak. Now, when we are find ourselves in these uh, delicate and difficult circumstances and we need relief or we want deliverance there is since there is nothing that we can do to get ourselves out we have to count on and trust in the lord there are at least three things in these verses that we just read that we can do that will guarantee the Lord's hand that will guarantee that the Lord will work on our behalf. At least three things uh, in these verses. Now, it's not meaning that he needs our permission because the Lord does not need our permission to work. But here's what the Lord works with. The Lord works with and works mightily with faith. Faith. That's how the Lord works. And even sometimes, i tell you the truth, sometimes when we don't believe as we should, the Lord still, by his grace, he works. He still works. But if you want to get, if you want to see the Lord work, if you want to see his mighty hand, if you want to see him do what he can do and watch him do it, then you need to believe. Believe. Let's take a look at verse number 13. Moses speaking to the people. And number one, he tells them not to fear. That is the first thing that is necessary. That, that's the first thing. This is, this is fear. Fear is a, causes instability. Fear causes wavering. Fear causes doubt. And if I am afraid then the Lord is not going to be able to do all that he can do. I didn't say he won't do anything, but he will not be able to do all that he can do because, listen, I am living in, walking in fear. The Bible says that God has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us that spirit. Yes, there is a type of fear that is good. There is a type of fear that is necessary. We understand that. You should be afraid to touch a hot stove. Okay, you should be afraid to walk in the middle of a street where the cars are going back and forth. You should be afraid to do those things, okay? That, that's common sense. But when it comes to living our daily life, and when it comes to doing and stepping out in faith, fear has to be put aside. Fear has to be replaced by faith. Okay? Faith neutralizes fear. Uh, faith cancels out fear. And so right at the beginning, Moses says, listen, don't fear. Stop being afraid. God has got it. And if you want to see him move, you're going to have to begin by putting fear out of the way. Then he says, look, he says, don't fear. And this is, this is the first thing that we need to do. Fear should be a, a common sense move. But here's the very first, first thing you need to do. 
He says, stand still. Stand still. That simply means stand firm. See, along with faith, there needs to be a confidence. A confidence. Not in yourself. Once again, once fear is pushed out of the way and you are operating in faith, this faith is what opens up the door to what God will do. Faith. And so here he is. He says, stand still. Now something will happen when you stand in confidence, when you stand in courage, when you stand undaunted, not worried about what the enemy said he will do. Not worried about the different circumstances that seem to be surrounding you, that seem to be closing in on you. There is something that you can do. He says, first, stand still. Don't move. Stand firm. Uh, what is it? First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58 says it very well. It says, he says, stand still or stand firm. And let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. Don't be moved. Don't allow life to put you in a corner. Don't allow these different circumstances that rise up in your life, don't allow them to put you in a box and bury you. He says, stand still. Stand your ground. Having done all, Ephesians says, having done all, stand. Stand. So he says, look, you have to stand still. And when you stand still, something will happen. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When you begin to respond to life's circumstances in faith, that's when you will be able to sit back and watch him do it. Watch him do what? Watch him do whatever it is that needs to be done. He will do it. I don't know what it is you need done. I don't know what it is that you're praying about. I don't know who it is you're praying for. But when you respond and approach that thing in faith, you will see what God can do, will do on your behalf. So he says, look. Stand still and see the salvation, the deliverance of the Lord. It's of the Lord. It's not of me. It's not of you. You cannot bring yourself deliverance. You will never free yourself from whatever it is that you're dealing with. You will never be able to free yourself. It's all a matter of faith in his power. In his power. Stand still and see his salvation, which he will show you, he says, today, today, for the Egyptians whom you see and have seen today, you will see no more forever, forever. That is such a encouraging promise. This thing you see now, this thing that is blocking your way, this thing that is blocking your vision, this thing that is trying to set you off, this thing is which is trying to put you in a corner, it's going to be vanquished through faith by his mighty power so that you will never be bothered by it again. So that's the first thing we need to do. If we want to watch God do it, if we want to see God do what he can do, we have to stand still. Stand firm. Stand firm. Hold your ground. Hold your ground. Stay right there where you are. Be steady. Steadfast and movable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Stay where you are. Second thing we see in verse number 14. He says, based on the fact that you're standing still, and all these three must be done in unison. They have to be done together. Based on the fact that you're standing still, he says, now the Lord shall fight for you. The Lord shall fight for you. Wow. He tells me, I don't 
have to fight. I don't have to come to this fight. The only thing I come to this fight with is faith. Rather, the only thing I come to this battle with is faith. That's it. I show up with faith and the Lord will fight for me. Yes. And the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. That's the second thing we need to do there. He'll fight as you are equipped with faith that he can do it and you shall hold your peace. That means be silent. You're already standing firm in what he can do. Now, don't move a muscle. Don't say a word. See, we like to talk about what's going on in our life. We like to see what's going on and then we start to complain and, and then we start to murmur and then we start to uh, uh, talk bad and talk begrudgingly and talk in bitterness and, and whine and moan and he says, look, be silent, silent, say not a word, let God work, let God work, listen, the Lord has been dealing with us, with folks like us, the Lord has been dealing with situations and circumstances and problems and difficulties, he's been dealing with these things forever, nothing is new under the sun, especially to the Lord. He knows what to do. He knows the end from the beginning. Let God work. Hush. Hush. Be quiet. Let God do what he can do. Let God do it. Hold your peace. Hold your tongue. That's one of the most difficult things for us to do, is to be quiet. To be quiet. We always seem to have something to say. Even when it comes to the things of God, we always have something to say. We always think we have something to contribute, to help. Be silent. Let God work. Let him do as he pleases. The third thing he says here in verse number 14, he says, the Lord shall fight for you. You shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore, why are you crying to me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. Go forward. You see, if I don't stand still, if I don't hold my peace, it's a sign that I am not uh, responding in faith, and this will cause my steps to go back. <clears throat> this will cause my steps to go back. So, based on the fact that I'm standing still and holding my peace, now I can move forward. And so he says, look, move forward. So how do you stand still and move forward at the same time? Well, the two, the two are basically the same. When you're standing still, once again, it simply means that you are not responding in fear. You are standing firm in what the Lord can do. You are staying out of it. You are holding your peace. Now, based on all of that, now you can go ahead. Because it's the Lord that is fighting for you. The Lord. Move forward. When God is moving, when he opens up the way, now you have to step in. You have to step in now. It's not the time to step back. It's not the time to be reserved. It's not the time to wonder. It's not the time to doubt. If he opens up the door, step through. As long as, it's, as it is he that has opened up that door, you have to step in. He says in verse 16, lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea, divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. The sea was the problem. They were stuck between a rock and a hard place. They had the enemies. They had Pharaoh's pursuit. Pharaoh was coming after them, but all they could see in front of them was a sea, the ocean, the water. What to do? We stop here, we die. We stop here, the Pharaoh comes, destroys us. We go ahead, the sea. We go in, the sea destroys us. But because we have stood still, 
because we have held our peace, now we can move forward. All by faith. That's the trigger. All by faith. Now I can step in, and then when I step in, watch him do it. Watch him do it. Once I step in, it says, you shall go through the midst of the sea on dry ground. That is the result of responding to life's circumstances in faith. Oh, I know it's, oh, oh, I know. Difficult, difficult, hard. Don't know which end is up. Don't know whether I'm coming or going. Don't have a clue what's going to come next. But when you are able to respond to life in faith, in him, these are the things that happens. He opens up doors. He, he opens up the water. And maybe tonight you need for the Lord to part the water. There's a song, there's a song that we used to sing years ago. It says, when I think I'm going under, part the waters, Lord. When I feel the waves around me calm the sea. When I cry for help, oh, hear me, Lord, and hold out your hand. Touch my life. Still the raging storm in me. And I know that's how it feels sometimes. Sometimes the, the, the ocean and the water and the pharaoh, sometimes it's not external. Sometimes it's internal. Sometimes you feel the enemy bearing down. Sometimes it's flesh on the inside. It bears down. And you need for those waters to be parted. It's only the Lord that can part the waters. But you only do it when you believe that he can. By faith, stand still. Hold your peace. Move forward. Because look, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's really not about what's going on. Because these difficulties are no problem for him. Read what it says in verse number 17. I want you to see how many times the Lord mentions himself. It's all about him and what he is able to do. Do you believe that God is able? Do you believe that he is able to do it? Do you believe that he is able to bring you out? Do you believe that he is able to bring you through? Do you believe that he is able to get you over? Look at who's in control. Verse number 17. This is the Lord speaking. He says, and I. He says, behold, I will. He will. Harden the hearts of the Egyptians. I got the Egyptians. I have the enemy. They are in my, I have them. I have it. Behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and, and, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh. You see, all these different things in our life that seem to be coming against us, these Pharaohs in our life, these enemies, God means to get glory from it. You say, God's going to get glory from my problem? God's going to get glory uh, from my difficulty? He will get glory from it as you put your trust in him and you will see him work through it and in spite of it, you will see what he can do. And yes, he will get glory because it will be you praising him, glorifying him, giving him honor and praise because of what he has done. Look what it says. They shall follow them. I will get me honor upon. In other words, he says, I will, I will gain glory through Pharaoh. He will gain glory through the enemy. And upon his host. Upon his chariots. And upon his horsemen. It's all in his control. Watch him do it. Watch him do it. The next verse. And the Egyptians shall know that, here he comes again, that 
I am the Lord. When, here it comes again, I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horses. Listen, I know that the Pharaohs of your life, they are difficult. They are relentless. I know. But God is able. God is so able. And so, even though the Pharaohs in your life, they pursue with a mind to overtake, with a mind to hurt, cause harm, kill you if they could, the Pharaohs in your life. The Lord is in control. Lord, help us to stand still. Lord, help us to hold our peace. Lord, help us. Help us to move forward. See, we can't, what we cannot do is allow the enemy to turn us around. We cannot turn and retreat. We cannot retreat. We cannot surrender. That's what the enemy wants. That the, that's what the enemy is waiting for. We have to stand our ground. We must always stand our ground. And don't allow the enemy to come through and do that which he wants to do. Listen, it's the Lord that's fighting. It's not you. It's not you. He, he will get glory. See, we always... We always feel that we need to step in. We always feel that we need to step in and do something. Listen, all you need to do is watch him do it. Watch him do it. What do you need? What is it that you need tonight? Is it something material? Is it something financial? Is it something internal? Is it something mental? Is there something spiritual? Is there something that you're dealing with that is beyond your scope to deal with? Whatever it is, the Lord, the Lord will make a way. Where, and here comes the cliche, the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. That's what he does. The Bible is the, the, the Bible is full. The Bible is ripe with miracles. The power of God. Once I've heard this, twice I've heard this, that power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Listen. Listen. His power is relentless. The, look, the enemy is the enemy is going to be relentless too. The enemy is going to come in like a flood. The enemy will come in like a flood. Scripture is very clear. When the enemy comes in like a flood. Not if. Not maybe. When. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. It's the spirit of the Lord that will lift up a standard against him. Pharaoh. It's the Lord that lifts up the standard. It's not me lifting up the standard. It's the Lord. And the only way he can do it is if I put my faith, all of his power on my behalf, directed toward me and my circumstance, is going to be activated by faith. So it's the level of my faith. God will operate based on the level of faith that I exhibit. And it's not so much about exhibiting. You can, you can look like you have faith, and you can sound like you have faith. But once again, do you have faith in here? You see, faith steps out. Faith steps out. Faith, the song says, faith in God shall move a mighty mountain. Listen, 
I don't know what your mountain is. Scripture says, who are you, O great mountain? I don't know what your mountain is. I don't know what your obstacle is. I don't know what your, I don't know what Pharaoh is chasing you, is pursuing you. But I do know that the Lord is mighty. To the pulling down of struggles, the Lord is able. God is absolutely able to deal with whatever problem, whatever circumstance, whatever situation you're dealing with in your life. Look what it says in verse 19. The angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So the Lord now, based on my faith, based on the standing still, based on the holding your peace, based on the fact that now I am set to move forward, now the Lord is about to spring into action. He's about to spring into action. Now, we don't always see these things happening. They were literally watching what the Lord was going to do. We don't see the Lord setting himself. We don't see the Lord readying himself and getting himself in position to do battle with the enemy. We, we, we don't see it. But here they had a bird's eye view. Just know that once all of these three directives are in place, you can expect the Lord to begin to move. Now, I don't know when now. <laughs> I didn't say it's going to happen overnight. I didn't say God's going to work overnight. I didn't say he's going to work. He's going he's gonna to work. Okay, he is going to work. These people were in a precarious situation. I don't know how many times that I've seen the Lord work Listen, the Lord will, the Lord will give you what you need when you need it. Oh, I can remember so many times uh, years ago when the children were young, they were small, they were babies, uh, and, and, and we had, we had no food. Let me just be straight. We, we didn't have anything to feed, nothing really good to feed the children. And I'm telling you, so many times I can recall bags. You, you, you hear about it. You hear people testify about it. Or you might hear it on TV, a testimony. But when it happens to you, all you can do is say, say thank you, Lord. I've had, I've had bags of groceries bought to my house. Bags of groceries just sitting on the floor in front of my door. I open up the door and there's groceries there. I, I, I've seen it. it. It's happened to me over the years, several times over the year, over the years. So, so I know what God can do. See, God will, God will bring you to a place just to show you what he can do. Sometimes he works by grace. Sometimes he works in spite of us saying, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, please, Lord, what are you going to do? Lord, I, I don't know what to do. But it's when we learn how to hush our mouth. Lord, you see the need. Lord, I'm in your hands. The Lord will come through. The Lord will come through. I can remember years ago, uh, there was a certain amount of money that was needed. Uh, I can remember certain amount of money that was needed for something. Maybe it was rent. I, I don't remember. But I, I get home from work, and I hadn't been thinking about it. I didn't think about it. I didn't remember. I wasn't sitting and wondering, when is this check going to come? When is this check? I, it, it, was, it was so far from my mind. All I was thinking about was, I need money. I need money. And I got home. And unexpected. It was, it was unexpected because it, it sort of came too soon. It came kind of quick. That's why I wasn't thinking about it. And I opened up that mailbox. And that check was in there. That covered everything. And I remember getting <laughs> I remember getting the check. Getting that check. And running around that little house. In every room. In that little house I had, we had at the time. And I remember running. Running around the living room, running in the bedroom, running in the children. I, I ran through the house like a crazy person. 
blessing God, thanking God that everything was going to be okay. L listen, God will come through at the right time. He may not come when you want him, but he going to come right on time. Every single time. Listen, David said it well. He says, I've never seen a righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Listen, God is going to watch over his people. God is going to deliver his people all the time, all the time. And so let me read verse 20 and we'll bring this to a close. It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israel and Israel. And it was a cloud and, and it was a cloud and a darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all night. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And this is when the children of Israel went through the midst of the sea. Listen, God is going to do it. God is going to do it if you would only trust him. Trust him. Believe what he has spoken. Don't put your trust in kings and princes. In other words, don't put your trust in people. They're going to hurt you. They're going to mess you up. Put your trust in him and he will bring it to pass. You want to see God move? Stand still. Stand firm. Got to have a firm resolve. Lord, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Lord, I, I believe what you said. I'm not going to trust in the lies. I'm not going to trust in what the enemy says. I'm not going to believe what my mind is telling me. I'm not going to listen to what people are trying to talk to me about. I'm going to see your word and believe what your word says. I'm going to stand still and stand firm on what you have spoken. And then, Lord, I am going to hold my peace. Oh, there's plenty I could say. There's plenty I could murmur about. There's much to complain about, but Lord, I'm going to hold my peace. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to get in your way. And then I'm going to step out and move ahead based on what you can do. Because you are going to part my waters. You are going to be victorious over the Pharaoh in my life. It's all about you. It's all about you. Amen. You know, tonight, you know, the Lord really wants to bring home this point about trusting him for whatever the problem, whatever the situation. We need to trust him. It's too much time we spend trying to get things done in our own power. It, it sort of makes us feel good when we believe that we've done something to contribute. That's the flesh. That's the flesh wanting some type of recognition. No, no, get out the way, sit down, hold your peace, let God work. He wants us to trust him. He's teaching us how to trust him completely, completely trust. So where are you tonight? You find yourself trusting him or you find yourself trusting yourself? Or do you find yourself trusting in the enemy? In other words, believing that he is going to bring what he has spoken to pass. The devil's a liar. He cannot do what he says. If the devil's made you any promises, don't believe it. He's a liar. He's a liar. Your trust needs to be in him and in him completely. Completely. As you go through the rest of this week, I want you to make sure that you see Jesus, that you place your faith completely in him. See, it's at the cross that everything happens. It's at the cross. It's at the cross where we receive all of the benefits of this life, at the cross. That's why all of our attention, all of our focus needs to be right there at the cross. That's where we have to trust. Trust Christ 
and all he accomplished at that cross. When we do this, that's when the Lord can work on our behalf by his power, through faith, by grace. That's what the Lord does. Maybe tonight you don't know the Lord. Maybe these words are strange to you. Maybe you really don't understand what's being spoken. The Lord, the Lord, if you're not saved tonight, the Lord wants to do a work in your heart. He wants to do a work in your life. It's only him that can save the soul. It's only him that can set the captive free. That's what he can do. That's what you need to trust him for. If you don't know him tonight, that's what he wants to do for you. He wants to save you. And when he saves you, you will step into bountiful blessings. I didn't say these blessings will be financial or material, but these blessings will be spiritual blessings. And he's given us all spiritual blessings. But you must believe. You must believe. I'm going to pray. If you don't know the Lord first, I want you to pray along with me. If you're not saved, you're not born again, maybe you go to church, but you know that your heart is not right with God. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. Lord, I pray right now. Lord, that you would touch that one right now who does not know you. Lord, that one that may be very religious. Lord, that one who may be uh, very intent on going to church, but Lord does not know you. Lord, I pray you might touch them, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray you might speak to that heart, Lord Jesus. And even now, Lord, I pray that they may come to you by faith, Lord Jesus, trusting in what you have done for them at Calvary, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Lord, bring salvation, Lord Jesus. I cannot bring them in. I can only pray for them. Lord, I pray that they may see you continue to bring conviction on that heart. Lord, for those uh, tonight who are dealing with other things, those of your children, Lord Jesus, who are struggling with circumstances and situations that seem to be overwhelming, Lord, I pray, uh, Lord, that you may also touch them, Lord Jesus. Lord, teach them, Lord Jesus. Teach us, Lord Jesus, to stand still, to hold our peace, and to move forward, Lord Jesus, trusting that you can do all that you have spoken based on what you have already done, based on what you have done for us at Calvary. Lord, we know that you are able. Lord, teach us these things, Lord Jesus. Lord, don't let us just speak about them. Lord, show us what you can do. Lord, we trust you today to have your way in our hearts and in our situations. The pharaohs that come in our life will not overtake us because you will part the waters and make a way where there seems to be no way. Lord, have your way. Bless your people with peace in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes. This is the Bible Speaks Live. Listen, uh, we come every night, every Thursday night, rather, every Thursday night. Uh, we are here on Facebook Live and also on Spreaker.com, uh, soon to be on TuneIn.com. Uh, and we are here uh, beginning at 8 o'clock, because we just want the Word of God to be known to all. We want others to know the Word. That's what we are trying to do. Spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Let me read what it says in Matthew. Uh, you're very familiar, but let me, let me read what it says in Matthew uh, chapter 28. In verse number 19, it says, Go you therefore and teach the, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And then we come to Mark, Mark chapter 16, and verse, uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse number 15. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we are about. All we are trying to do is preach and teach the gospel because we believe that the gospel is real. Let me bring you to one more verse here in, in, in 1 Corinthians. It is in 1 Corinthians that we find out what the gospel is. 1 Corinthians 
and I believe we'll find this particular verse in uh, chapter chapter number one of First Corinthians. This is Paul speaking in verse number seventeen. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. So he says, preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the cross of Christ. Now we get a little, people have gotten a little twisted over the years that the gospel is is is, is prosperity and the gospel is, is, is this thing or that thing. No, no, no. The gospel is the cross of Jesus Christ. See, we get bogged down in, we, we get bogged down in too many other things. We, we get bogged down in, and trying to accomplish too many other things, which we'll talk about at another time, but it's all about preaching the gospel, the cross of Jesus Christ. In verse number 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. So we are preaching the power of God, the cross of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation. That's what we're all about at The Bible Speaks. You can also check out our blog at thatstheword.org. It is a blog that you can read. Or you'll find out some more very interesting things from the Word of God. Uh, that's the word.org. Also, you can check out our YouTube channel. And also, you can check out uh, my other podcasts on Spreaker.com. I have several podcasts that we do, and they're all found on Spreaker. Com. So once again, you can avail yourself to those things. So we pray that you will join us next week at 8 o'clock here on Facebook Live and Spreaker.com. This is Pastor Michael Jakes. The Bible Speaks Live. Remember, listen, that voice you hear, that might not be your voice. The Bible has a voice, and it speaks, and it's speaking to you. Pay careful attention. That's it for now. God bless you.